Greetings. Today is Thursday, June 13, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. In today's video, I would like to talk a bit about the updated forecast from the University of Colorado regarding the cyclonic activity anticipated during this year's Atlantic hurricane season. This forecast was updated on Tuesday, following the one published in April. Additionally, in the second part of the video, we will be analyzing the latest runs of the global models that came out last week, focusing specifically on the conditions in the Atlantic during the peak of the season. August, September, and October. You will see that this hurricane season is expected to be hyperactive and very dangerous for the Caribbean region, the United States, Central America, and Mexico. In the final part of the video, we will show some tables indicating the probability of a tropical system or cyclone affecting different islands in the Caribbean. Central America, the states of Mexico, and the states of the United States. Let's start by discussing the numbers projected by the University of Colorado. It is important to mention that the forecast issued yesterday is exactly the same as the one issued in April. This indicates a high level of confidence and consensus that the season will be quite active. In fact, the University of Colorado states that this is the most aggressive forecast they have issued in June for a hurricane season. I will soon be explaining the main factors considered to maintain this forecast. In terms of tropical storms, the University of Colorado is projecting that 23 tropical storms will form this year, whereas the normal number is 14. They also project that 11 hurricanes will form compared to the normal 7, and 5 of these could be Category 3, 4, or 5 hurricanes, while the normal number is 3. They are definitely projecting a lot of cyclonic activity. In terms of accumulated cyclonic energy, which measures the intensity and duration of cyclones, they are projecting that this year there will be up to 70% more accumulated cyclonic energy. This means not only strong and intense hurricanes, but also that their duration could be above normal. These numbers are quite concerning, but they align with what we have been saying for several months. It is important that if you live in an area susceptible to the impact of cyclones, you are prepared for this hurricane season. Let's move on to discussing the various parameters that the University of Colorado has been analyzing. The most important point is that they continue projecting that the La Nina phenomenon will develop by the peak of the season in Pacific waters. In fact, tomorrow, NOAA will be publishing its update on ENSO conditions, where we expect them to declare that the El Nino phenomenon has ended, and we are in neutral ENSO conditions. This is important because the absence of El Nino decreases wind shear, particularly in the western North Atlantic region, creating more favorable conditions for the formation of tropical cyclones. Another very important factor is that sea surface temperatures along the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean Sea, and the tropical Atlantic continue to be at record levels for this time of year. According to the model projections we will be looking at later, these temperatures are expected to persist into the peak of the season. In this graph, you can see that for August, September and October, there is an over 85% probability of having the La Nina phenomenon, a 20% chance of neutral conditions, and close to a 0% chance of having the El Nino phenomenon. Note that hurricane seasons with either La Nina or neutral ENSO conditions have been the most active in the Atlantic. Remember to check Hurricane Info today to see NOAA's update on ENSO conditions and find out if the El Nino phenomenon has officially ended. On another note, look at the anomalies in sea surface temperatures. We see an extremely warm Atlantic with significant ocean heat content. This can help not only in the formation of tropical cyclones, but also in the rapid intensification of those that find conditions with low wind shear. The University of Colorado has established a correlation between temperature anomalies and very active hurricane seasons. Typically, when the Northeast Atlantic, Tropical Atlantic, Caribbean Sea, and Gulf of Mexico have above normal temperatures. This results in more active than usual seasons. Also, note the region towards the east and northeast of the United States, where cooler than usual temperatures are also correlated with active seasons. Now, when we compare this correlation with current conditions, you can see that we have an almost perfect match, which is a factor the University of Colorado has used to forecast high cyclonic activity. To give you an idea of how extreme the temperatures are right now, for instance, between the Caribbean and Africa or the tropical Atlantic, the temperatures are on average the second hottest in history, only surpassed by the year 2023. It is likely that in the coming weeks, we will again reach the highest average temperatures recorded in June and July between the Caribbean and Africa. It is important to remember that last year was a year with the El Nino phenomenon, but the warm sea surface temperatures contributed to a more active than usual season. Imagine this year which is expected to have either neutral conditions or La Nina. This should definitely result in a more active season than the one we saw last year. Also, look at the Caribbean Sea region, where we are still at record high levels, meaning that average temperatures have never been as high as they are now. The same is true for the Gulf of Mexico, where we are at record levels, far exceeding any previously recorded temperatures for the month of June. 
These high temperatures, which dominate the main cyclonic development zone in the Gulf of Mexico, will serve as fuel for tropical cyclones. Another analysis conducted by the University of Colorado was to compare years with temperature anomalies similar to those we have in 2024. When looking for years when the tropical Atlantic was very warm and we had the La Nina phenomenon in the Pacific, the analogous years are 1878, 1926, 1998, 2005, 2010, and 2020. Specifically, 2005, 2010 and 2020 are the most active seasons on record in terms of the number of tropical storms, hurricanes, and major hurricanes that formed during those hurricane seasons. On average, 19 storms, 11 hurricanes, and 5 major hurricanes formed during these years. When we compare this with the University of Colorado's forecast, it closely matches the average of these years. The same is true for accumulated cyclonic energy, which averaged 197 units during these years, and this year, 210 units of accumulated cyclonic energy are forecast. Now let's look at the latest directions from the best global models. Let's start with a set of North American models, which project that ocean surface temperatures will remain above normal across the Caribbean Sea, the Gulf of Mexico, and the tropical Atlantic during the months of August, September, and October. The same is true when we look at the set of European models, which also project above normal ocean surface temperatures across the main cyclonic development zone. The same goes for the CANCEPS model which also shows above normal temperatures, especially in the Caribbean region. This is particularly concerning because it seems that the Caribbean Sea will be extremely favorable for cyclone formation this year. Therefore, it is important for residents of the Lesser Antilles, Greater Antilles, and Central America to prepare for the potential impact of a powerful hurricane. Additionally, in the projections of barometric pressure anomalies, you can see in blue that the set of European models projects that we will have below normal pressures, mainly focused just east of the Caribbean and within the Caribbean Sea. This is also concerning because cyclonic activity could be focused near land this year. The CANCIPS model projects the same with below normal pressure anomalies across the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. The combination of the La Nina phenomenon in the Pacific, very warm temperatures in the Atlantic, and below normal pressures near the Caribbean, results in a forecast of above normal precipitation anomalies from Africa to the Caribbean, mainly focused in the Caribbean region and the Gulf of Mexico. This could indicate strong tropical waves moving further west than usual, which would pose a greater risk to land areas. This is the projection of the set of American models. We also have the set of European models showing a very similar outlook. Again, look towards the east of the Caribbean, and in the Caribbean at the highest precipitation anomalies that can be recorded in the North Atlantic. This is repeated with the CANCIPS model projection, which also has above normal precipitation anomalies across the tropical Atlantic, and particularly in the waters of the Caribbean Sea. The University of Colorado, the projections from the best global models and other expert groups in hurricane season forecasts continue to project that this hurricane season will be extremely active and historic. On average, the forecasts say that this year we will have up to 11 hurricanes. The important thing is that everyone in the Caribbean Sea, Central America, Mexico, and the southeastern and southern United States is preparing for a very active and dangerous season. So the time to prepare is now. Before concluding the video, I wanted to show some of the percentages of the probability of tropical cyclone impacts in different areas, starting with the Caribbean region. Here you can see the probability of being affected by a tropical storm, here the probability of being affected by a hurricane, and here the probability of being affected by a major hurricane. In the next image, you can see the probability of impact for the states of Mexico. Likewise, here is the probability of being affected by a tropical storm, here the probability of being affected by a hurricane, and here the probability of being affected by a major hurricane. Now let's look at the impact probabilities for the states of the United States. Here is the probability of being affected by a tropical storm, a hurricane, and a major hurricane. Let's also look at the probabilities for the Lesser Antilles, starting with the Virgin Islands. Here is the probability of being affected by a tropical storm, the probability of being affected by a hurricane, and the probability of being affected by a major hurricane. For the other islands, you can see the probabilities here. So, it is important that everyone in the Atlantic is prepared for this hurricane season. Once again, here at Hurricane Info, I will be attentive to keep you informed, so it is important to check if you are subscribed to my YouTube channel so you don't miss any videos. Go to the bottom of the video to the red button that says subscribe, click it, and then click the bell to receive notifications when we record new videos. Additionally, for the third consecutive year, we continue with a sponsorship plan where you can become a member of the YouTube channel and receive some additional benefits with a small monthly contribution.
Thank you again for trusting Hurricane Info to keep you informed. Well, now I say goodbye. Until the next video.